Hello, everybody. My name is Valerie McLaughlin, intuitive heart healer and energy artist. And today I am so excited to be able to have a wonderful chat with uh, my friend, Dr. Teresa, who has been with me on my journey for so long. Um, I believe it's been over 10 years. And uh, I originally showed up in her office because I pulled my back out so bad I could barely walk. And the idea of going to a traditional chiropractor where they would crack my back scared the crap out of me. And my sister recommended that I go see her and it has changed my life. I have not seen another chiropractor. Um, well, maybe one Carmen I've seen uh, who also does the same. But other than that, I've not seen another chiropractor since then. But she's more than that. She's an amazing healer and she has been a mentor to me way before I even realized it and way before I realized um, that healing and doing what I do as an intuitive heart healer um, was even in my scope. So um, I would like to welcome Dr. Teresa today and I'm looking forward to this chat that we're going to have. Yeah, thank you, Valerie. I'm excited to be here. And I think about those days when you first came and you were in such pain and suffering, and you were in a job that you absolutely did not fit you. It was like your shell was breaking, and you were thinking that your back problem was about your back, mm -hmm. and it wasn't about your back. It was about so much more than that, and it's been so exciting to watch you on your journey of of just opening and expanding and being flexible and flowing and how you totally shifted who you well i don't think you've shifted who you are you just allowed yourself to emerge to awaken and emerge from that shell that was cracking when you first came to see me and i remember you thinking that no it's my back no it's my back <laughs> No, it's funny. It's I don't remember. I don't remember uh, a mm -hmm. lot, a lot about like the, our first meetings. But I yeah. do remember this. At the time, my my ex wife would have to drive me to your office, even though I would still work my ten to twelve hour days as a yes. manager. She would have to yeah. drive me because I couldn't drive to your office. And we went to the office, and she goes, "I don't know what she's doing. I don't understand why you keep going to see her." And I said, "All I know is that." I feel so much better when I get <laughs> off that table than when I got there. And mm -hmm. I know it's helping me. And mm -hmm. I really don't know what she's doing either, but I know it's helping me. <laughs> and I just <laughs> keep coming back and coming back. I always believe that divine spirit sends me people that I, you know, I do no advertising. I don't do anything to try, but divine constantly sends me people that are just so ready, just mm -hmm. so ready, yet don't really know it yet. Yeah. And I just love working with that population, with people that are just beginning to emerge and are ready and willing to, well, maybe not in the beginning willing, but are re willing to be willing to start hearing the deeper message. Because the one thing that I say to new practice members is, I have no idea what's going to happen to your pain and suffering. I don't know where it's going to go. It may go away. It may not. Um, and that's not my job. My job is not to take your pain and suffering away or to try to fix you or heal you or cure you. My job is to help you change how you see it. And that the number one thing that I guarantee is that your quality of life is going to change. And, and, every time people's quality of lives change it's just amazing and sometimes you know after the um i've been working with them for a while i'll say do you remember why you came and they'll go no <laughs> say, do you remember you had all these headaches and you had this backache oh oh yeah really i haven't had that in so long so it's it's just for me, it's an amazing field. It's a, just a field where I get to use all of my years of experience and all of my tools. 
so I do want to talk about some of your years and experiences, but first I want you to, to tell everybody what you do. Okay. <laughs> or let's, let's say what you do as a chiropractor. Let's yeah. narrow it down first because, okay. you know, I know you do so much more, but, um, yeah. and wear so many different hats as some of us do, but mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about what you do in your practice. Well, my, um, tradition is called network spinal analysis or network chiropractic. I've been doing it for over 25 years now and was way with it way in the beginning. And um, it's a light touch, low force way of working with the spine and the nervous system. Uh, it, it, the purpose of it is to, or one of the purpose of it is, is, you know, it's to clear the nervous system. If our nervous system is clear, if the energy is flowing from the brain down through the whole body, if all the channels are open, there's no impingement to those um, channels, then the body's going to work. The body is an amazing, amazing tool that we came to do this earth walk in. My teacher used to say, we came to do this earth walk in a body and we spend most of our time trying to figure out how to get out of it. And getting out of it is not being uh, uh, aware of it. Just, you know, so my work is about bringing you home, bringing you back to the physical form where you can start to understand um, that any kind of discomfort that you feel is about, is your body saying it's time to change. Something has to change. So that's my work. And as the nervous system gets clearer and the messages get flowing, um, one gets more awakened and more, there, there's more stress, less stress and less tension and less, um, tautness around the nerves and and everything can just function the way it's supposed to it changes not only our physical form but it changes our mental emotional and spiritual fields also because we can now think clearer because we're not so caught up in in oh my back is hurting mm -hmm. you know we have freedom now to be able to make changes in our lives and i i really think uh, the, to me, what I notice is questions change. When people come in in the beginning, they're in pain and suffering. And I think the pain and suffering is a really important part of our journey. We tend to not want to suffer today. We do everything we can to stop suffering. But suffering is really important because it brings us to the truth. And the more we can crawl in and allow ourselves to feel what's going on, the more we're going to open and expand. So the questions usually start with, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? And one of the things I, I like to say, the Tony Robbins used to say all the time, our questions always get answered. So they should be very important questions because they move us forward in life. So questions like why questions don't really serve us. Mm -hmm. Instead of why is this happening to me, we can say, huh, how do I change this? What do I, how do I need to think different? Well, how do I need to change my behavior? How do I change? So questions go from why is this happening to me to transformation, but you know, the first is discover. The second stage of my care is called transformation. And that's where, huh, okay, I noticed this is happening to me. And okay, I'm gonna, I'm starting to think differently about it. Maybe it's serving me. And then we get to the third stage, which is awaken, which is, you know, how is this happening for me? How is this happening for me? And how can I use this fuel to change the world? Yeah. So that's what I do as a network chiropractor. And I work on the spine. It's light touch, low force, little tiny contacts on the nervous system that I determine through uh, uh, stages and protocol through network. And then, as you said, I bring a lot more to it. So, uh, and I think most network chiropractors do that. We kind of, as we've been doing it for years and years and years, 
kind of flow into using all of our tools. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, One of the things yeah. you taught me is that you have to feel it to heal it. And I think yes. part of me kind of knew it because I was always one person that didn't like to take pain, pain medicine, even Tylenol. It was like, yeah. you know, something yeah. like that. <laughs> and you're like, you have to feel it to heal it. But part of what I wasn't really doing is listening to what it was saying. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, you know, who likes to hurt? Nobody wants to hurt or to feel pain. So it's you say, just please just fix this and make it go away. I don't care what you have to do. Just fix it and make it go away. And my teacher, Donald Epstein, used to say, I don't want to take it away until you get it. Yeah. You know, until you get it. And that's the journey of getting it. What is, what is my body asking me to do to change? It could be as simple as raise your computer screen or don't sit as long at your desk, get up and walk around um, to change this, get rid of this job, change this relationship. That was you know? <laughs> yeah. Both <laughs> aspects of those last <laughs> ones. <laughs> So it could be little changes to big changes, but it's really checking in and saying, okay, buddy, what is it you want me to do here? I don't get it right now. I'm just going to sit with you in this pain. And we use, use this pain as fuel to, yeah. to, to change our lives. Yes, we do. Now, now it's the point where sometimes I, suffer too much in the pain before I come with you because I'm, I'm trying to figure it more out on my own what it's actually telling me. And sometimes I have yeah. to get and be like, okay, it's time to go. <laughs> you've you've overanalyzed yeah. this way too much. It's time to go. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've been in this work for, like I said, over 30 years. And I go every week yeah. to get in. We call it entrained. We don't call it adjusted, uh, adjustment. And I go to Tom's River because I that's the nearest network chiropractor. And um, I, so I drive, you know, almost an hour every week up and back because I know how important it is, even if I'm not in pain, to have my nervous system flowing. And there's sometimes when I don't know that it's, it's stuck or it's not, you know, there's an, a, a, a something that's happened. So I just, you know, and I have people like yourself who have been coming for years and years and years. And I have people like your mom who comes every week, every week, you know, and, and that's what I do too. And it's, I love people that really get this, like how important it is to our lives to have our nervous system flowing and free and open and I tell you what, she is missing the fact that she is not getting to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she really is. We were talking about it the other day, but uh, you said Tom's River. I just want everybody to know you are in Galloway, New Jersey. So any I'm in Galloway. Yes, that I surrounding will. area. That's the area Dr. Teresa is, and I highly recommend getting in, yeah. and seeing her. And I have people that come to me from Pennsylvania. I have people that come to me from Vineland, from. Um, Kate May, I have people that come to me, drive to me from all over because they want my special way of being able to do this work. Yeah, and let's talk about that a little bit because I wanted to do that because you, you, are, you are special, we're all special, and you <laughs> offer us something different than most network chiropractors do. And part of that has to do with the, your journey that you want, that you've taken through yeah. and all the, all the wonderful teachings that you learned along the way. So you also lend your guidance and wisdom to us when we go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Which I am totally grateful for. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about some of the, the things that you've practices and uh, that I've done. Yeah. Well, I've always been, as long as I can remember from a kid, a lover of the earth. I used to collect rocks and shells and stones. I love the earth mother and the, the earth. And I studied at the Crystal 
Crystal Academy for the Advanced Healing Arts in New when Katrina Raphael was in New Mexico years ago. And I studied with her crystal healing. And I started as a crystal healer. That's what I would do. I'd put stones on people's bodies and take them into trance and take them on journeys that were really cool. And every once in a while, I'll, somebody will ask me to do that still. And I haven't done it a lot, but I will do it. And um, uh, so, and then I uh, went to do a workshop in Massachusetts with a woman called Oshana, who's not with us anymore. And I studied with her for years, Oshana. She's an Apache warrior of the third grade. And what that means is that every year she would run with the warriors in the, their test to become warriors. And every year she'd get certified again and she was allowed to wear a third grade in her hair. And uh, she was a shaman, medicine woman, teacher. And I spent many, many years at her feet learning so, so much. And um, and she just is uh, still, I feel like she's still with me. I, I felt her, her when, yeah. when, you, when you mentioned it, it was like this energy that came yeah. in. Was, I was just taking yeah. it and it was so beautiful. Yeah, she, she was just beautiful. And um, so she taught me so much, so much that I just um, can't even imagine. And throughout my life, I, I'm, I, I'm an experimental person. Um, I want to feel it and experience it. So I've always been attracted to healing techniques or to teachers who do things where they, you constantly are being challenged and tested. And I mean, I had to jump over a five foot fire pit. I've um, been buried in the earth to feel what it feels like to be in that experience. I mean, the things that I've done in my life, I can't even begin to tell you <laughs> how uh, um, scary things, exciting things, challenge things that I wanted to do. I became a warrior for Mother Earth uh, with Oceana. I got initiated into that. And um, then at some point, I, I, I studied, I, studied and stayed with some different Native American tribes and studied with some medicine women and medicine men. And I love to tell this story because at one point towards the end of my time being with the Native Americans, I um, was sitting around, when you do a ceremony with the Native, in a Native American tradition or the traditions I stay with, you don't put the fire out. You have to uh, let the fire burn out. A ritual fire has to burn out on its own. You never put it out. And so we would volunteer to be fire keepers in the evening and sit around and just kind of get a stick and work with the embers until the fire went out. And it was a nice time. So I always volunteered because you got to talk to people. And one day I was sitting there and all of a sudden I felt myself leave like I'm sitting with the group and all of a sudden I left. I was inside myself looking at us sitting here. And I thought, what am I doing here? I'm not a Native American. I'm not, I don't want to be a wannabe. So what do this, and that I got in that moment that I was finished on that path. That was time to move on. So as I love Father Joseph used to say, when God closes one door, he opens another, but it's hell waiting in the hallway. So it's kind of like I went into the hallway and thought, well, if I'm not going to have that, what, how am I going to feel myself next? So I um, sat with that question, like, what is opening for me? Where's the door? Where do you want me to serve next? That kind of thing. And then I kept thinking, what is it I loved about studying with that group of people? And what I loved was the rituals that they did and the earth rituals they did. And I thought, how do I get that without being there? And I realized that I could get it through studying about the goddess. So I went to um, 
I was in California at the time and I went to study at a temple and I started learning about all the different goddesses, the goddess of the earth, the Artemis and all the wonderful goddesses and Venus and all of them. And I really got into that and got into studying with a woman named Starhawk who wrote a book that I just um, loves and I can't think of the name of it right now. I have it around here somewhere. And she would have rituals for every high holiday. So I really got into doing that. And I started a group in California, a goddess group, and we started celebrating all the high holidays and through ritual and ceremony. And that just really spoke to me and resonated with me. And eventually I went on to be a high priestess. And, um, just really loved that whole tradition and still use it a lot today. As you know, I have altar in my yard to the five sacred things, which is the four directions um, and plus spirit and earth. So I really um, grew up, uh, when I got back here, I started another goddess group, group because I really wanted to keep that in my life. When I came from California back to New Jersey after I graduated chiropractic school, I, and that's another thing. I graduated chiropractic school at 50. Whoa. I don't think I ever really realized that. Yeah. Yeah. I graduated at 50. And I, I remember when my kids were grown and they left and my chiropractor said to me what are you going to do now I said I don't know he said why don't you go and be a chiropractor and I said I don't know I'd be 50 when I graduate and he said well you're going to be 50 anyway why not be 50 and be a doctor and I went oh my gosh that's so true so I packed my car up and drove cross country and went to school and graduated and had a healing center in California for several years and then moved back here to take care of my elders as they were at the ending of their journeys. So, um, so when I work, I use drums and rattles and sage and I use crystals and stones and I do chakra balancing and I, uh, make noises and chant and, <laughs> And I do network chiropractic and um, um, uh, somatic respiratory integration, which is a, a way of, of using the breath to work with the body also. So it's been a, a really kind of exciting, interesting journey of, and I believe that our stories are what teach. teach. We teach through our stories. And I have so many stories. And when people um, say something, I have a story for it. And, and you, the stories are all from my personal experience of having experienced, you know, I'm 73. And when you get to be 73 and you chose to live your life and to live an awakened life, you have many stories to share. And through them, I do my teaching and I think as a wise woman of the tribe um, it's my duty to share my stories with people yeah yeah so that's it <laughs> and it's so true because you've shared a lot of stories with me along the way and it's always the story that I need to hear at the time yeah even if I don't realize it <laughs> even if you don't realize I call them medicine stories they're yeah. medicine stories yeah I always tell people that you've planted seeds along the way and and uh even some of them help nourish them grow for me as I move through my journey until mm -hmm. I was ready to see what they actually yeah want. and um and I say that I say that a lot and all the time. Like she may not have thought I was listening, and part of me, part of me wasn't, but also part of me yeah. was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how we become teachers by living our lives, mm -hmm. living the experience. It's one thing to read about it in books. It's another thing to uh, to take workshops. All of that's good, but it's 
It's taking that information and then going back and living it so that you get your own stories mm -hmm. to be able to tell. Yeah. And that's what makes a, a shaman and a wise person is, I mean, Oshina constantly talked to us through stories. Isn't that what Jesus did? Yes. You know, and Buddha did and all the wise teachers mm -hmm. talk to us through parables and stories. Yeah, I, I like to work with oracle cards and people always say, what are they? And I'm like, there are, there are the stories. I said, yes. it's like the stories that have been passed down to us, you know? Yes. I mean, like stories like the tortoise and the hare, like these are all oracles. These are all stories that help teach us lessons. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you do that really well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk also a little bit about what's going on what's going on in the world today. Um, I, w I had the privilege yesterday to talk to a nine-year-old uh, young lady, and um, which actually I think sparked some of the painting that I did because when I get this energy built up, sometimes I don't know how to release it and the art is mm -hmm. releasing it. Um, amazing young girl who, feels a lot and sees a lot of inner visions and i was just kind of helping her along the way but um one of the things that she's feeling even though she's not seeing it on tv is a, a lot of the sadness that's happening right now um and some of the fear but with her it was a lot more of the sadness and she she's been like crying and it was very very nice to talk to her so even if you're not my point is, even if you're not watching the TV or reading the no, the the, the noise, <laughs> the news is what I was going to say. Yes. The noise wanted to come. Noise. Um, energetically, we could still feel what's going on around us. We could still feel that sadness. We can still see, feel the panic and the fear that others are feeling. And what are some ways to help people through this? Or what are some experience that you have with the energy that you've been feeling? So here's where I am with this. I have heard so many theories about what this is, what, what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, we have mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual fields. So in the spiritual field, there's the bigger picture of it. You know, the people are talking about how it's come here to change our lives and blah, blah, blah. The um, mental is the scientific, it's a virus, it's coming in, it's, you know, doing, it's replicating, it's doing this and that. Um, the physical field is the Mother Earth is trying to get us to shut down for a while so she can heal ourselves. Uh, there's so many theories about what's going on. And the truth is, I have no idea what any of this is about or what it is. And I really want to be sitting in that place of mystery and no idea. I want to not go into my mental field to try to figure out why uh, this is happening. Because to me, going into our mental fields a lot of times is an escape from what we're feeling. The truth is, it's here and it's happened. The truth is, stress happens, viruses happen, these things here happen and everything comes to help us i i want to go inside and use it as an opportunity to change myself i can't make the virus go away i can't change anybody the only person that i have any influence over is myself and so I want to notice everything I'm feeling when I feel it. You talked about this young woman feeling the sadness. Sometimes I feel great sadness. Sometimes I feel fear and panic. Oh my God, my practice has dropped off. You know, how am I going to survive? Sometimes I feel the beautifulness of it. Sometimes I feel like, oh my gosh, I, I'm a busy person. I want to be out moving around and doing things and I can't and I don't like this. Um, I'm, I'm using it as fuel to open and expand myself and to get myself to a greater awakening. And if I sit in the soup of it, be in it and be part of it, 
instead of take myself out of it by trying to figure it out. When I'm sad, I'm sad. When I'm feeling peaceful, I'm peaceful. When I'm scared, I'm scared. Just giving myself permission to be in the confusion, to be in the not knowing, to be in the whole enchilada of this experience. That's what I'm doing. And that's how I'm helping myself be at peace. You know, I say you have to feel it to heal it. So I want to feel every different piece of it. You know, I really believe that God is the source of my supply, not my practice members. So I know that I'll always be taken care of. I never have to worry about that. Uh, and when I forget that, I have tools to help bring me back to that. I have books that I can read, tapes that I could, your show that I can listen to, these different people speaking. We have so many tools today to help us remember. And, and one of my teachers used to say, we're, humanly, we're divinely perfect and humanly imperfect. And I really like that because there's times when we're in our divine space where we're okay, we're peace and we get it. And there's time when we go into our human space where we're caught up in the panic and the fear and everything. And so I want to feel every single piece of everything that's happening to me around this. And I want to be in it and I want to give myself permission to feel it without judgment. I don't want the spiritual people out there telling me it's not okay to feel scared when I'm scared. I want to feel every single piece of it. And I want to use that, um, those emotions to, to awaken myself to a greater understanding. So I have no idea what it's about, what's going to happen, where it's going. All I know is that for now, I'm sitting in a house, me and my sister, we're staying here. I do still work, but I'm, I'm do, even limiting that. I'm working one day a week. I'm um, seeing people individually instead of in groups where I usually, you know, we, I have two tables while I have one. Um, I'm only allowing one person in at a time. And you have to come from a quarantine house to come into a quarantine house, which is us. You know, I have all these rules and I clean everything down and wipe everything down because I want people to feel safe. I want them to know that I care about them and I'm helping them to feel safe, even though they're still coming because it's so important to have our nervous systems clear and free and flowing so the power that made the body can heal the body and the you know, the body is an amazing tool that can heal itself. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's where I am with this. Yeah. And All you're... over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I agree. You know, I feel I feel that, the, you know, all those things you talked about with like Mother Earth throwing, slowing down for us, but also for herself. Um, and and that something beautiful is on the other side of this. This is part of mm -hmm. me. I don't know what it is, but I'm just letting it happen and letting it unfold. Um, but also one of the messages, you know, one of the things that I, I kind of keep sharing with my group is, um, you know, it's great to take the time to send out the healing to heal the world, but you can do an even greater service if you begin to heal yourself. Yes. Yes. And use this opportunity to heal yourself because when I come out of my door I don't want to go back to where I was mm -hmm. I want to be at a whole different place a whole new place yeah and I and and I'm not sure exactly what that new place is for me yet but I know that I believe and trust and have faith that it is. I, I like my line is God's got this, you know, and um, whatever word you use, I, I like the God word just because it's comfortable for me. I grew up with it. Um, and I just know that we can't go back. We have to go forward. And so when that door opens, I want to be a different person that walks out of it as a result 
of having had this experience. I'm right there with you. Mm -hmm. I'm right Good. there with you. That's, that's yeah. what I want. And, uh, and I, I think that now is the time for us to kind of sit and be in that. Yes, you know, to sit in. Yeah. It's, it's also that time to, you know, some of us might have not taken t this time to make the shifts that we've been feeling. Yes. About. yes. Now, is, now is that time. It is. Now is it that so time. is. And I, I've always been a busy person. I would joke and say I'm a rabbit. You know, I'm always doing busy, doing, doing, doing. And some of that busy has been, you know, I go out and work in my yard and I love it. It's my creative space now. I grow my, a lot of my own food. Yeah. I'm a farmer and a gardener and I create this. But that, I'm realizing because the weather being the way it's been, I'm not even able to do that. And I'm realizing how much that has been busy work for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I, I would say I meditate out my yard, I sing to my plants, I talk to God, I do, you know, it's my place, my happy place, my peace place. So how do I get that happy peace place if I'm not out in my happy peace place? You know, how do I bring it up from inside of me that even if that means sitting on my couch in my living room, and I'm telling you, that was a, that's a challenge for me, sitting still. I, I, I've always had my parents' voices in my head of that's lazy, you, you don't, you know, you can't just sit around, you can't sleep all day, get it out of your pajamas, you know, get up and do stuff. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing these messages and voices from my past come in, and um, I'm noticing how uncomfortable it is for me to stay in and do nothing, to take naps. And I'm finding that I love naps. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I haven't been able to jump on. I haven't. Yes. I've laid down a couple of times and uh, yeah. I might get yeah. into like a deep meditation, but not, mm -hmm. not naps. They seem yeah. not come. But I had this conversation actually uh, of the uh, last online relax and heal. I do it. My friend, Jen, it's yoga Nidra. And I said, yeah. distance healing. Um, and I, my mom was in on it. And one of the things that came through that I wanted to share with my mom and I said, I'm sharing this with everybody because she's my mom and <laughs> but I can put this one on her because she's done it to me in the past. Um, and I said, mom, you need to stop finding projects to do. Yeah. Yes. And I said, I know you. You're in, you're in the house now and you're like, oh, now I could do this. And you got this closet tore apart and this living room tore apart and this doing this. And I said, now's your time to sit and allow yeah. this to happen because I know that you yeah. I don't know how much she's listened to that and I know she's going to watch this. So. Yeah. Um, well, I, I also know, know that you have to figure it out for yourself. Yeah. It yeah. can't be because somebody's telling you. Yeah. And that's, that's what I had to get. I found myself one day watching myself go from window to window in my house. It was pouring rain. And I felt like a little kid sitting there, like looking out the window at my yard and not being able to get out there to do anything. And I thought of that song, rain, rain, go away. Teresa wants to go out and play. <laughs> I thought I was watching myself go from window to window looking out. And I thought, wow, look at you, Teresa. You're just so straining at the bit, you know sit down, sit in this, feel what you're feeling about this, feel the frustration, feel the sadness, feel whatever. And so that's what I, it just showed me myself. And so now that's what I'm doing. I'm just feeling what I feel in every moment. And it's just interesting. Yeah. And it looks different for everybody. It looks different for everybody. Totally different from ev to, to everybody. And um, you know, listening to music for me has been really good. And I like oh, the randomness, yeah. like random. I asked Google to play, um, happy songs and it played me all songs from Disney movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
oh, that's great. And I was like, this is a Disney movie. And then this is, I'm like, you know what? This is kind of fun. And it is playful and being that uh-huh. playful. And, like, and I'm like, okay, I like this. And sometimes it is turning the TV on and watching something. Yes. I'm loving old, I'm loving movies. I'm reading, I'm watching romantic comedies like Shakespeare in Love. And, you know, I've been, we, my sister and I have all these movies that I forgot I had. I said, look, I have a whole bunch of them. Let's, let's play these. And we're really enjoying our time in the evening sitting together watching movies. You know, I did that um, after my grandma passed away. Uh-huh. The day, the, the, actually, the night that she passed away, I searched high and low for every Richard Gere movie online. Oh! fine because that was our thing we love Richard Gere and every time a new movie Richard Gere movie would come on in the movie Uh theater we would go on we'd go to dinner and go watch the movie it was it was our thing we saw other movies but it was like you know made it a point and she had all these collections and I I probably watched about 10 or 15 Richard Gere movies Uh uh-huh (laughs) <laughs> and, yeah. it, and it was like my and that was it once I was done then you know yeah. that was it I didn't need to but it yeah. was like I felt like I was with her and uh, now I feel like I need to watch Disney movies after listening to all the Disney songs today well I don't know if you've seen the new Frozen Frozen 2 I did you see it oh I my actually, god it is amazing I actually watched Frozen 1 last week or last week and a uh-huh. half because I hadn't seen that one. Yeah. And I, at the end, it's like, you know, all, all we need to do is send it love. And I was like, how, did I, how have I not watched this? It's been like yes. for five years. How well, wait till you see two. It and is I'm like, so okay. great. I mean, she goes into the cave in the dark night of the soul. and She comes out and emerge. I mean, it's just, I kept saying, oh my God, this is like, a, a journey this is her journey to herself and her own knowing yeah 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 I was like I have to do that I did watch have you have you ever seen the dark crystal no I don't I don't the, think so dark crystal, think. the dark crystal came out in the 80s and if you have Netflix it's on Netflix okay and um it was a, a puppet movie mm-hmm <laughs> Last year, they did like the prequel to Dark Crystal. I forget the actual name, but it's, uh-huh. it was a series that they did on Netflix. And okay. my friend Todd um, was over and he's like, we have to watch this. So we watched this and I'm watching it uh, and I'm going, oh my God, oh my God. Like all of these like <laughs> hidden like little things. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. I'm like, I have to go watch because I remember watching Dark Crystal as a kid. It was an 80s uh-huh. movie. I'm like, I have to go back. And I watched it and I was like, how did I not see these messages before? It was like in that, uh, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I I think think you might enjoy it. So (laughs) social isolating movies to watch. Frozen 2 and Dark Crystal series. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, so it's interesting. So here we are. We're here until we're not. Yeah. Yes. Is there anything else you would like to uh, share with us today? Well, um, people can go on to my website, mm-hmm. which is transformationalwellnesscenter.com. I also have a Facebook page, Transformational Wellness Center. Um, they can reach me at my, at my cell phone number, which is 609-432. 5881. I work out of my house in Galloway. Um, I have limited hours right now, but I see people. So, um, yeah, that's it. And if you want to um, experience a different way of being, come see me. Yeah, absolutely. I highly recommend it. I tell so many, so many people. Um, because it has been so transformative for me, the whole uh-huh. thing. And, um, you know, it has helped me, you know, I, if I'm not feeling well, if I'm coming down with a cold, I go see you. I don't go yeah. see you. You know, I go see yeah. you. Um, and, you know, after, you know, something happens, it's where we turn to. And, and I'm not just talking, I say we, cause it's my mom, my sister, my, yeah. son, my nephews, yeah. you know, we, yeah. we you know, lost our, 
uh, aunt and uncle in September. I think that that same day we all showed up within hours <laughs> of each other, you yeah. know, and the next day. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's where we go to help us because we yes. need it. And it's so much more. Yes. Than and you don't have to be in pain and suffering. No, no. Sometimes it's, you're in that, that you could also be in that unknowing part of your life. And yes, and that's a good place for you to go. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, yay, this has been great, even though we had all those technical difficulties in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good.